Hello everyone, I'm Alvaro Torralba and today we are going to talk about the optimal efficiency of A-star with dominance pruning. A-star is a, a heuristic search algorithm that uh, is a typical choice for solving shortest path problems and the reason is because uh, A-star is optimally efficient in terms of node expansions and we have known this uh, things long ago. Now, the motivation for this paper is that I have been working to, with dominance uh, pruning methods in the context of cost-optimal planning. After one of the talks, Rina Dechter herself came to me and asked me uh, how is dominance pruning achieving a lower amount of expansions than A star if we know that A star is optimally efficient. Of course, the answer is because dominance pruning is exploiting this uh, dominance relation, which is a new source of information. And uh, that means that uh, under this new source of information, the previous results of optimally efficient of A star are no longer valid. However, uh, this brings up the question, why are we using dominance pruning in A star then? Because if uh, these results are no longer valid, then that it might mean that the other algorithms could have uh, more pruning or, or better results. So in this paper, we are going to uh, look at this from a theoretical point of view and try to bring some insights in these uh, questions. Now let's start discussing why A star is optimally efficient. We are going to use this example where a truck has to go from A to G, and every time that it moves, it consumes one unit of fuel. And here below, you can see the state space of this uh, task. Now, the general class of algorithms that we are going to consider are uh, those algorithms that do forward search in an expansion-based manner. Uh, so at the beginning, the algorithms only know about the start state and uh, the heuristic value, where the heuristic is a function that returns as a lower bound on goal distance from any state. And the way that the algorithm goes, is going to obtain more information about the task is by expanding the node, and uh, it will uh, generate the successors and compute the heuristic value. So it will continue expanding successors until finding a solution and proving that it is optimal. And what we want is an algorithm that does this by performing the minimum number of expansions as uh, possible. Uh, in the rest of the talk, I'm going to be drawing the entire uh, state space so every time. But remember that at any given point, the algorithm only knows about the set of uh, states that have been expanded and the immediate success. Now, what characterizes A star algorithms is that they expand uh, nodes based uh, on the F value. So they will always pick a node with minimum F value for, to expand it. Where the F value of a node is just the distance from the initial state plus uh, the heuristic value. We see that this is a family of algorithms because at any given point, there might be one more than one possible choice. For example, here we have two different nodes with uh, F equals three and uh, different tie-breaking strategies might pick different uh, nodes. So we say that we have an A star algorithm for every possible choice. I recommend everyone reading uh, Dexter and Pearl uh, paper because it has a lot of uh, in interesting results. But the one that we are going to focus here is that A star is one optimal on consistent instances. What does this mean? Well, it means that for any set of uh, nodes that any algorithm could expand, there exists a tie-breaking of X star that expands a subset of that uh, set of nodes. And for that, uh, the only thing that we need to assume is that uh, the heuristic is consistent. That means that uh, for any state and any uh, successor of that state, the heuristic cannot decrease by more uh, than uh, the action cost. And the nice thing about uh, assuming that the heuristic is consistent is that a lot of properties uh, follow. For example, that uh, nodes will be expanded with their optimal G value in A star, and that uh, any algorithm that uh, proves optimality of the solution must expand every node with uh, an F value lower than the optimal solution cost of A star. So in our example, uh, the optimal solution cost is five. Therefore, every algorithm will need to expand all nodes that have an F uh, value uh, four or less. And uh, then for those values, uh, for, for those nodes that have F equals five, A star will expand a subset of them until finding a solution, depending on the tie-breaking strategy. Uh, for example, this could be the, the minimum number of nodes that uh, need to be expanded. In. Now, uh, one might ask why can, a, can an algorithm just not expand the optimal solution? Well, because then uh, the algorithm will not have any information on, on what's beyond uh, B9, and uh, as far as the algorithm knows, there could be a transition from B9 to F5, uh, uh, leading to a total solution cost of three, which uh, of course this means that if the algorithm doesn't expand B9, it has not proven that the solution is optimal. And there will be some problems where uh, the, the algorithm returns to optimal solution. Okay, so 
that's uh, for, for the optimality of uh, AS star. And now we introduce dominance pruning, a new source of information. But the source of information which is a dominance relation, which for every uh, pairs of states or for some pairs of states, it will tell us that the uh, state T dominates the state S. And every time that the, 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 the relation tells us that, uh, this uh, means that the heuristic, uh, the, the, the goal distance from T is lower or equal than the goal distance from S. The key here is that uh, sometimes we can guarantee that a state is uh, as close to the goal as other, even if we don't uh, know the exact goal distance. For example, with the fuel here, we know that having more fuel is better than having less fuel. And therefore, if the track is in the same location, for example, at C, and we have uh, more fuel, we will dominate a state with, uh, with uh, less fuel. That means that uh, in our example, we can, for example, prune C8 because uh, we know that uh, we have C9, which is uh, closer to the initial state, and it's at least as close to the goal. Therefore, uh, if C8 is an, in, a, in an optimal uh, solution path, then C9 is, is, is in another. And we can safely prune C8 uh, and still guarantee that at the end we will find an optimal solution. So we define the family of uh, unidirectional forward search uh, algorithms with dominance pruning. Uh, as uh, algorithms that can uh, prune nodes according to the rule, the rule I just described. I want to remark that these algorithms don't have direct access to the dominance relation and can only use dominance for pruning according to the rule above. And uh, a star with dominance pruning is uh, a subclass of this uh, more general family of algorithms that is characterized by two things. On the one hand, it will always span nodes based on F value as a star. And on the other hand, uh, it must always prune a node whenever it can uh, be pruned. It cannot choose to not prune a node. So is A star with uh, dominance pruning optimally efficient? At first glance, we might think that uh, yes, especially if we look at, uh, at an example like, uh, like uh, ours and we compare against A star, we will see that a star with dominance pruning is expanding a subset of the nodes that are expanded by A star. And the reason is simple. Uh, until the last F layer, uh, A star must expand every node. And now with dominance pruning, we can prune some of them. And in the last F layer, everything is a matter of time. So why would uh, A star with dominance pruning not be optimal? Well, this is true over A star, but uh, if we consider the more general uh, class of algorithms that do forward search with dominance pruning, we see that uh, A star with dominance pruning is not optimally efficient in general. Why is that? Well, consider this example over here, where uh, after expanding uh, the initial state, we can choose whether to expand A or C. Now, A star doesn't have a choice because it must expand a node with minimum F value, which means that uh, it max expand uh, C. However, the optimal algorithm would actually expand A, and uh, that way it will get to CB, and then it can prune C. A star with dominance pruning cannot prune C because it, cannot, it has not seen B before expanding C. Therefore, in this case, the expansion of the of a star is uh, not optimally efficient. But also, sometimes it could be worth to expand a node even if it can be pruned. In this case, uh, it doesn't have anything to do with expansion or as soon as uh, we expand the initial state, we will prune a state B because we must prune every node that uh, must be pruned. And that means that we will never get to C B prime. And therefore, we need to expand C prime and all the successors of C prime. On the other hand, the optimal algorithm would actually invest one expansion uh, expanding B in order to get to C B prime and then avoid all the expansions of C prime and uh, the corresponding successor. So this uh, is not uh, that different from uh, the case of the optimal efficiency of A star because in A star we also needed to make some assumptions, for example, that the heuristic is consistent. Uh, and so basically this uh, brought us the question, what do we need to assume uh, in our case? And we came to this answer, we need to assume consistent instances of this form, where we don't only assume that the heuristic is consistent, but also that the dominance relation is consistent and that the dominance relation and the heuristics are consistent with each other. Let's go into this in a bit more detail. That uh, the fact that a dominance relation is consistent, uh, we are going to require that it's transitive and uh, that is a co-simulation relation. That is transitive is very simple. Every time that uh, B dominates C and A dominates B, then that must imply that A dominates C. And this is uh, quite intuitive. 
On the other hand, uh, cost simulation means that uh, every time that uh, a node C9 uh, dominates a node C8, for every uh, possible transition from the dominated state, the dominating state must have some transition to a state that dominates uh, that successor. Uh, the intuition here is that uh, if we know that uh, C9 uh, is uh, closer to the goal than C8, this is because for everything that C8 can do, C9 can do something uh, as good as it. This might look a restrictive uh, restriction, but uh, it is not. Actually, all the state of the art methods rely on, on this in order to actually find dominance uh, pruning relations because. This is actually the argument that it is used in order to prove that one state is as close to the goal as another without actually knowing their goal distance. And uh, consistency between heuristics and dominance uh, just means that every time that a state T dominates a state S, we are going to require that it also has lower heuristic value. Uh, again, this may, uh, makes sense because uh, otherwise we could just improve the heuristic value uh, with the information that is provided with the dominance. So that would mean that the that the uh, dominance relation is having access to some information that the heuristics do not. Um, and the nice thing about assuming this is that uh, it follows that whenever a node is pruned by another, the, the node that we need to see in order to perform this pruning has lower uh, or equal F value, which means that uh, this is very uh, good with the expansion order of A star because we will always get to see the states that we need to see in order to perform pruning. Uh, so we, we have this conjecture that this is uh, actually true for most heuristics and dominance relation, and this might uh, lead you to think that then the kind of information that is provided by the heuristic and the dominance relation is kind of redundant. But actually this is not uh, the case. The information is still very complementary, and the, the reason is that the information that is provided by the dominance relation is much uh, stronger than the one provided by the heuristic, because it gives us guarantees according to uh, which state is uh, as close to the goal as, as the other. And um, uh, the heuristic doesn't provide those guarantees, but on the other hand, we can use the heuristic for any pair of states, which uh, for the, the, the dominance relation only gives us information about a subset of, of, of pairs. So with all those uh, assumptions, can we now prove that uh, A star is uh, one optimal and consistent instances? Well, in our uh, running example, again, it looks like yes. But if we just make this uh, a small modification, increasing the cost of this edge um, to two, now uh, we will see that now we have actually two uh, optimal solutions, one that goes to G5 and another one that goes to G4, and both have cost six. And the point is that uh, A star with dominance pruning cannot guarantee to find a subset of, uh, of the nodes because uh, by, by pruning this node, it will not be able to find uh, the solution above. So in this case, A star with dominance pruning is expanding some nodes that are not expanded by, by A star or other algorithms. So we need to change the optimality criteria. And what we do is to consider whether A star with dominance pruning expands uh, a minimum amount of nodes and not a, an exact subset of the nodes. And we can prove that A star with dominance pruning is uh, optimal according to this criteria on consistent. I will not go into the details of the proof, but uh, main idea is that if we consider the, the set of nodes that is expanded by some algorithm, we can transform it into the set of nodes expanded by some tie breaking of A star with dominance pruning by removing the nodes that are not expanded, but A star with dominance pruning, and then adding some nodes. And uh, we can uh, check that for any node that uh, has been added, another node that is dominated by it uh, has been removed. So the number of nodes uh, uh, added uh, has to be lower or equal than the number of nodes that have been uh, removed. And uh, this is the, the key part of the proof that we can always do this uh, for any possible um, algorithms. Now, to conclude, I want to uh, briefly talk about uh, tie breaking on A star with dominance pruning. Because in A star, we know that tie breaking is only relevant in the last F layer. Whereas in A star with dominance pruning, uh, we will see that A star is, uh, tie breaking is relevant in all layers. In this example, we have these four states with F uh, value of four, and we could actually prune C8, but only if we get to see first uh, C9. And if our tie breaking uh, leads us to expand C8 before we actually uh, have seen C9, then we will expand C8. So 
in order to to avoid the expansion of uh, of C8 and CC9 first, we would prefer tie breaking on uh, on nodes with lower G value, which is kind of the opposite of what's uh, usual, usual in uh, AS star. In AS star, usually we prefer to expand nodes with uh, lower H value because that's better in the last F layer. But uh, well, the example that I have just shown shows that this is not optimally efficient until the last F layer. And on the other hand. Uh, a tiebreak that prefers nodes with lower G value, we prove in the paper that it's optimally efficient until the last F layer. That means that we have uh, some trade off uh, of these two tiebreaking strategies. One is uh, better until the last F layer, and the other one uh, will be usually better in the last F layer. And uh, our preliminary example show that uh, with uh, current heuristics and dominance relations, following the heuristic uh, in the last F layer is more important. So actually the standard tie breaking strategy is still superior. So in conclusion, we have introduced uh, dominance pruning techniques that uh, have a, a new source of information for heuristic search algorithms, but we have shown that uh, AS start with dominance pruning is still optimally efficient if we uh, have uh, some assumptions on uh, the consistency of heuristics and dominance relations. And uh, we have also uh, briefly discussed that uh, until the last uh, layer, it's better to break ties in favor of uh, minimum G value. So with that, uh, I conclude and looking forward to your questions.